I've been a carp angler for over 25 years and you know you could say it's a life's work you know it's a it's a lifestyle and I wouldn't have it any other way but when I was younger you know looking back at these you know I used to enjoy hearing stories of other guys greatest achievements you know their greatest captures and you know be inspired by that and in the big carp story this is the opportunity for me to look back and tell you guys some of the stories that until now have remained untold and just for me to reminisce about the good times. I'm going to take you back nearly a decade. Um, so in 2010, I was fishing a lake called Charity Lakes in Norfolk and uh, I got to know a guy called David Yarnham. And um, the year that followed that, 2011, sort of over the winter of 2010 into 2011, I spent a lot of my time writing My Missent Youth. And, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have any real nice tickets. I was fishing a little bit during 2011 on Monk's Pit, I'd done a little bit there in the spring. But, you know, I was looking for the next big one. Do you know what I mean? The next one that was going to really, really motivate me. And um, I remember saying to David Jarnham that, I needed a, a ticket, you know, something to give me that fire in my belly again. And he said, you can, um, you could probably get a Fen ticket if you want. And to be honest, Fen Drayton was somewhere that I'd known about a really long time. One of my good friends, Philip Kerwin, he'd fished on Ferry, which is next door to Fen for a long, long time. And I just, you know, there was a lot of myth surrounding Fen Drayton. There was like talk of fish and, but, you know, I'd heard so much about it, but not really seen that many pictures that accompanied it, the, the rumour, you know. And, it, you know, if you're going to go somewhere that's notoriously difficult, big, and put your heart and soul into something, you know, it really does need to have the end goal, you know. There has to be the prizes there, but... You know, most of what I'd heard about Fen was old news. And in, in the years like leading up to this period, sort of in 2011, it had seen quite an introduction of fish. You know, next, next to Fen Drayton, on the other side of um, like this the bus route sort of thing that goes down the side of the lakes there, um, there's a load of nature reserves. And they just so happen to be full, or not full, but they certainly contain some outrageously cool carp, you know, and over... A few years they'd slowly been slipped into Fen Drayton because Fen Drayton had fishing rights the nature reserves didn't um, so slowly some some fish started got getting transferred across um, and suddenly you know myth all the myths of what might be in there was irrelevant you know what what had gone in there was the was the real thing you know um, and there was a fish called the client you know I'd seen it in carp talk, there was a few others. One, one particular one that really stands out was Marcus's. Um, some crazy amounts of like scaly ones and like just some of the best carp that you could ever ever imagine. Um, and like I say, I'd never really thought about it until Dave Yarnham sort of mentioned it. And there wasn't there wasn't fifties in there, you know. And when I said I wanted the next big thing, I was in my mind when I said that I was thinking of. I wanted that next one individual target fish. And when he mentioned Fen, I was like, well, it hasn't got 50s, but it's got numerous really, really nice ones. And you're allowed to use a boat there to put your rigs out and stuff. And I thought, you know what? That that could be one. So uh, I said to Dave, yeah, if you ever have a word with the uncle and see if um, see if I can get a ticket. Um, next thing you know, I got a call from Uncle Jim. I hear you want a Fen ticket. And um, yeah, he let me have a ticket. And it, like I say, that was, I was, I had to pay my money and get in. And I think it was the middle of June. Um, and during 2011, that was the year that my first book was launched. So I was fishing monks in the spring. My ticket started on um, Fen in the, in the summer. And then um, in the autumn was the release of my book. And I remember after the book came out, I went to Fen and I didn't have a, um, a boat or anything. I just rolled up on my wheelbarrow and <laughs> pulled into the car park, loaded my wheelbarrow up and the wind was like proper like October day, 
wind is smashing down onto the, the near end of the lake. And they say, to tell you a little bit about Fen before going to it, they say Fen, they say it was 90 acres, but I, I would say it's more like 60. Um, and stock wise, the uncle had said maybe 75, you know. Um, but you're speaking to the regulars, they say, 40 was probably more realistic but if you said 40 to 75 you know in a lake of 60 acres it's reasonably low stock without being outrageous and the 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 guy that had caught the most the previous year had done 130 nights for 13 fish so 10 nights a bite for the best guy you know which you know it's spicy you know but not absolutely outrageous you know someone's caught 13 fish in a season and having fished at lakes like St Ives and Conningbrook you know it's you know I knew it was going to be difficult but it didn't it wasn't like oh my god difficult but you know it's it's a sort of lake that you're going to be anxious about going there you know it's not somewhere that you just you think you're going to roll up and have them but getting back to the point I uh, I rolled up in October loaded my wheelbarrow up massive wind blowing down the lake and uh, past two guys they had boats, boats in the swim, and if, if you've never really used boats for fishing, you see boats with engines all propped up, rods tips up, and waves bashing into the bank, and you think, cool, that looks good. And I could, there was just this this vibe, you know, I'm the, the new guy, my ticket started in June, this is my first session in October, uh, rolled up with my oil barrel, and they, they were cold, you know, maybe they knew the fish were out there, you know, you, uh, I'm a known guy within the fishing industry, they weren't gonna just, hand it out to me on a plate but I went down into the I went a couple of swims down into the corner the wind was smacking in there um literally just cast out three yellow pop-ups and drunk eight beers woke up in the morning and thought you know what starting a campaign on a lake like that in October is probably not the one you know I knew that the book was getting launched in November I knew that I had to um be doing a bit of running around for that and I wasn't ready, as in I didn't have a boat, didn't have an engine. Um, I just went for that October session. I just wanted to go and get my feet under the table. You know, I'd sent the book off to the publishers. I wanted to go and have a little look, but it was just, you know, that one session. I, it wasn't the time to start, you know. So over the winter, my first book was launched, and I got myself a boat. I borrowed it off my um, my friend Danny Webb. He had a, one of those big two five twos, um, so I went round to his house. Uh, picked that up, uh, got myself an engine from Daiwa, got myself some uh, leisure batteries, a couple of like big ones from Halfords. And um, I remember like, I'd had a really, really good spring. When I say spring, I, I March, I had this little syndicate lake in Chelmsford um, that I had a, been a member of for a very long time. And I, during March, there's, a, there's, there's 50 fish in this lake. I caught 20 of them. And most of those 20 had come to single hook baits, little tiny 12 mil pink pop-ups. Um, and I'd been putting them out to where the fish show and it'd been a really productive method in March on this little lake. And the weather in March had been, I wouldn't say it was like stormy or anything, but it was really sunny for that time of year. Really, really good daytime temperatures. Um, and although Fendrayton's big, it's full of bars. It's relatively shallow for a big lake. By By the end of March, having fished this local lake for a very long time, I was I knew that the big pits would be stirring, you know, the weather had been good enough. We're moving into April, I'm thinking, if now's the time, you know, if I'm gonna to go to Fen and have a go, the best time to start on a lake that you know nothing about is probably spring, you know, when the lake's got no weed and stuff like, it's a good time to start, as opposed to when I'd been there for that first trip in October. So I got, I got Danny's big 252 boat, and uh, I haven't got a roof rack, and I hadn't had a trailer, and I had an escort van at the time. So I've I've pushed this this boat onto the roof of my escort van, and I've strapped it down with ratchet straps that I bought from Halfords um, through the cockpit. So I had to open the doors of the van, like the, the straps going around the boat inside the cat the cockpit, and there it, where the wind, um, like the front mirror is there. I'm, I'm ratchet stra strapping it tight, and uh, I drove down with Natalie, who's my girlfriend, like we've not been together too long at, at that point. Um, we're now married, it's over, like I say, over 10 years ago, but um, she was coming down for, I think our first session was two nights. I'm not sure, it could have been three nights, but you know, I, I'm gonna say it was two nights. But we, we drove up the, um, 
the M11 and the A14 with this boat on the roof. And if we'd have been pulled over, I'd have probably got Nick because it's probably, I was a guess, illegal. 